Hey guys and welcome back to day 5 of Indie Formers 8 Days of Christmas. Today we're going to tackle a little bit of a difficult subject. That's right, there's been some very naughty boys and girls this year who don't deserve the gift of indie games this Christmas. We were going to give them coal, but global warming. What can you do? Instead, we're going to give them the most difficult, torturous and masochistic indie games that 2014 could throw their way. <laughs> One Finger Death Punch is one of the most deceiving games we've ever come across. Here's why. The graphics and budget significantly belie the game's quality. The game is actually a two finger death punch because there are two commands and as such two fingers needed to play. It looks like a fighter but plays more like a rhythm game with you timing your attacks left or right as instructed on screen. And lastly, despite the game appearing so simple, it is unbelievably hard. Button mashing will get you nowhere. Your timing with your fingers has to be absolutely precise or you'll miss. And it's incredibly easy to do so under the pressure of the increasingly relentless and rapid enemy waves. This just goes on and on until the game becomes an intense two finger marathon torture. A challenging and addictively pleasing two finger marathon torture mind you. Created over two years by the one Danish developer, Winds of V is a 2D action platform in the vein of classic 80 games, Mega Man and Castlevania. Like other challenging games of the modern era, such as Super Meat Boy and Shovel Knight, Winds of V swaps the arbitrary difficulty of its predecessors for skill-based gameplay. You'll still die a lot however, except it'll be entirely your fault. So soon you'll be trapped in a downward spiral of death and self-hatred until you become the devil itself. And that is the true mark of a really difficult game. The series that revived the real-time combat dungeon crawler genre got a sequel and unsurprisingly it's even harder. The enemies are greater in number and more varied, further increasing the need for quick thinking in combat. And like in the originals, the combat is brutally contrasted by complex puzzles that need a lot of patience to solve. Not to mention, if you can't solve the puzzles, you'll be missing out on the best weapons and armor that make the game much easier to complete. To top it all off, the whole world in Grimrock 2 is about 4 times the size of the original, making the game considerably longer. Grimrock 2 will probably fry your mind before you beat it, and we don't even want to think of what it will do to newcomers of the genre. That's it for day 5 of our 8 days of Christmas, we'll be back tomorrow for a more relaxed video on the indie game sequels of 2014. Instead, we're going to give them the most torturous, difficult, masochistic games that we... that 2014 could... AND ALSO SPANKING! Difficult and masochistic games that 2014 could throw at them. AND ANOTHER SPANKING! And masochistic indie games that 2014 could throw their way. AND THE THIRD SPANKING!